He joins us every single Monday. We kick off the week in style here on the Daily Crow, the Roach King. Roach, what's going on, my friend? How are you? Moving slow, man. Moving real slow. <laughs> a weekend in Columbia takes its toll yet again. Not the first time, certainly not the last. Again, Steven yeah. Garcia, appreciate you taking the time, man. Before we jump into everything, of course, you see his polo. Got to tell you about our friends over at Rebel Rabbit because the segment is brought to you by Rebel Rabbit. Guys, Rebel Rabbit is a new seltzer company right here out of Greenville, South Carolina, but they're not just another hard seltzer. Rebel Rabbit is an alcohol-free, THC-infused high seltzer. Yes, THC-infused. All of Rebel Rabbit's high seltzers are infused with just enough Delta-8 or Delta-9 THC that will open your mind to an entirely new drinking experience. And I did not really update you guys last week, but Rebel Rabbits are incredible when you enjoy them responsibly. I only had one last Tuesday night, and it was pleasurable. It was nice. I was very relaxed, cool. You drink too many, you're going to be floating the stars, but I was good. With only six grams of sugar and all-natural organic flavoring, it's a light, refreshing social tonic that helps you cut back on booze but not on fun. So, guys, whether you drink alcohol a lot, a little, or none at all, Rebel Rabbit's the perfect replacement or alternative. Follow them, guys. Follow the rabbit for a better way to booze on Instagram at Drink Rebel Rabbit. We always tag them, of course, when we post Steven's clips. Also, visit their online store at drinkrebelrabbit.com or check out their store locator to find the closest rabbit hole near you. Or you can also order online and have it shipped directly to your door. So, guys, again, Rebel Rabbit, go support those guys. You see Steven and I drinking them all the time. We appreciate our friends at Rebel Rabbit for supporting the show. Steven, let's dump into it, man. Hey, winning's fun, man. Yeah. Winning run. <laughs> Stogie's on deck. Rebel Rabbit's on deck, dude. Yeah. Um, man, what a weekend you chose to come into town. I know obviously you had a really unique vantage point on the sideline. So I'm really excited to get your take on that. Uh, dude, as someone who's worn the garnet and black, you know, you, you've experienced some crazy moments, right? I'm thinking 09 Ole Miss, 2010 Alabama. You think of Willie B and just how loud it can get. Xavier Leggett's opening kickoff return for a touchdown. I got a feeling that's got to rank pretty high up there for the electricity felt in that building. Dude, absolutely. Absolutely, man. And, you know, I, I remember uh, talking about the lights. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they the online does not do it justice. The, uh, those, the lights, when those things are firing off, um, and as loud as that place was, I mean, that's – yeah, I was getting goosebumps. I'm kind of getting goosebumps even talking about it right now. It was, it was, uh, it was awesome to see that. We, we, we need that energy. We need that energy yeah. at, all, at all times. Yeah, you talk about Steven getting off to a quick start, right? That was a huge storyline going in this game, and we had seen this team all throughout the year. You know, sort of sputter out of the gate, and Texas A&M had done the same thing. I mean, you really just can't script the better start, can you? I mean, the kickoff return, the interception that I thought probably should have been a pick six, but either way – uh, the interception, then you get the the weird ball going off the A&M quarterback's knee. I guess you'd call it an interception. I don't know, interception, fumble, whatever. The turnover that Tonk Hemingway gets. Before you can even blink, Carolina's up 17 to nothing. Uh, obviously, put the Gamecocks in a great position to secure that one. And I don't want to say put it in cruise control, but you felt really, really confident after that start that that was South Carolina's game to lose. For sure, for sure. And we tried like hell to lose it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we I, didn't. But we didn't. Like, I was like, "What the hell is going on right now? What, is this the same team or, or what's going on?" But yeah. you know, you got to give uh, you got to give A and M credit. They uh, they got punched in the mouth, like you said, really early, um, and they fought back with you know their third and fourth string quarterback. So uh, you got to you know give your hats off to them. But yeah, that was uh, that was a big time win for for us for the program. Um, I think. I don't. I don't think a lot of people expected us to win, um, but that was that was important uh, win right there. Mm -hmm. Steven, we talk a lot about Shane Beamer and, and the positive energy and, and, and the, the emotion, if you will, and the, the mentality of this football team. Again, you had a really unique vantage point because you were on the sideline. And so I'm not saying you were like in the huddle or anything, but you were down there. I'm sure you could kind of sense the body language and the emotion. Just, just talk about it because I feel like this is a team, Shane Beamer talks about it a lot. They just never flinch. You know, it's not perfect. It can be ugly at times, but this team is resilient. We saw it last year. We've seen it this year. They just continue to find a way to stay positive and bounce back. And I think that obviously stems from Shane Beamer and what he's building and has built to this point uh, at Carolina. No, for sure. Um, I can tell you this much, and I know we talk about it every single Monday. Um, the confidence level difference from the Georgia game to this game was it was night and day. Um, that was a confident group of guys right there. Um, and it showed. You know, it shows. Uh, and you can, you can feel it. It's palpable. 
Um, yeah, well, that's that's we just needed that since since day one. But you know, I think uh, with Rattler kind of getting a little bit more comfortable with the with everybody, and you know, everybody kind of getting more used to each other, I think it definitely helps. But you know, I think beating Kentucky and Lexington was definitely a uh, a big one. And then obviously, when this past Saturday, it's we're 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 a very confident football team right now. Let's talk Spencer Rattler, Stephen. I, I you know the the numbers don't jump out at you, but I I, I thought Rattler. You know, I thought he played solid, wasn't great. Um, he was hurt by a couple of drops. He was hurt by a couple of non-call PIs. I, I thought for the most part, he, he took care of the football. I know the one, obviously, he's hit from the blind side. Chambers said he's got to get that ball out quicker. What did you see from Spencer Rattler? Because I thought, Stephen, uh, I thought there were a couple of throws in that game at the sideline that you looked at and you said, like, this is why you brought him here. I mean, that, that, that's, those are throws that only a couple of guys have the arm strength to really make and can, and can put that dart on the money. Um, what did you see overall from him on Saturday night? Same thing, confidence. Um, just looked like a confident kid, uh, confident player. Um, stayed back there, made the throws. You know, I wish um, the one touchdown that was dropped, man, that was that was a hell of a ball. You know, seeing it from from the sideline on the scramble and tossing that thing up. He's got to come down with that ball, that's for sure. But uh, but you know, it's it's he he's a much more confident uh, player, at least at least in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look at the arm strength. I, I, I do agree with you, the entire football team playing with that confidence. It's easy to be confident as a quarterback, and you know this, Stephen, when you got a guy like Marshawn Lloyd, toting the rock. I mean, that dude is a monster, and I'm sure you'd agree. I think he only had four carries in the first half. Um, it, you know what? It, <laughs> not, not to this level, maybe, but it kind of reminded me, I know this was after you, Stephen, but the 2013 game at UCF when Mike Davis had like four mm-hmm. carries in the first half. And then he's like, get me the football. And Carolina right. was able to ride him to victory. It yep. kind of just felt like, I mean, I, I know they want to do different things. And I, I know it's not as simple as this when you're devising an offensive game plan. But it's like, it feels like at this point, the game plan should just be, just give one the football. Like, he, he makes plays. I it, yeah. Just give him the ball. And you saw it. And, Steven, especially that final drive, which I want to get into the O-line in just a second. But – so impressive. An eight-play drive. You score a touchdown. Seven of the eight were running plays. And you look at the way run to, one totes the rock, man. It's just a lot of fun to watch. He, he runs pissed off, man. I mean, that's that's what you want out of, out of a running back. Uh, he does not look like someone that would be fun to try to tackle. Um, just, just puts his head down and tries to knock the hell out of you. So, I'm a fan of him. I think he's a hell of a player. Um, but, yeah, we, we just got to keep riding the uh, – Riding him and and you know just keep uh keep Spencer off the uh, off the ground. Yeah, and again we mentioned the offensive line. I want to make sure we sing their praises, Stephen, because again it, it's not perfect all the time, but for nobody it is. But uh, to have a drive like that again, the final drive, eight plays, seven of the eight are running. It's one thing to be able to run the football, but it's another to be able to run it when you want to, right? right. And to be able to run it when you need to, and to be able to ice a game like that. And we obviously thought at that point that was. You know, I, I was going ahead and celebrating. Little did I know that Texas A&M might have a play to to win it or whatever. But I, but either way, that that was a that was a a ice the icing the game type of drive, and to be able to do it in that scenario was was really fun to watch. Yeah, any anytime you can impose your will on a you know the defensive line, I mean that's that's what those linemen love, man. I'm I'm sure they probably told Satterfield like, give the ball to one, let us let us run block. Like we're done with the pass block, let's let's put this put this on our back and let's let's get this job done. Um, so yeah, like I. It, it all comes down to confidence. It's it is it looked like a very very confident football team um, this Saturday night, and it was uh it was encouraging to say the least. Yeah. Now I, I feel like Stephen, it would be irresponsible of me because I'm sitting here on cloud nine. I mean, it feels good to be good. Winning is fun. I, I'm I'm still like to the moon right now after that game Saturday night and just that the entire day, the tailgate, the emotions inside Willie. And that was a special night. That was a special night. I don't want to make it more than what it is, but I mean, it was truly a special game and a special night for that football team and its entire fan base and this program. Um, when you look at the offensive side, though, looking critically, um, you know, you had some quote-unquote invisible yardage because you had a kickoff return for a touchdown. You had short fields on the pick and the and the other turnover. But under 300 yards of offense, there's still gripes about play calling. Uh-oh. Must champ hackers working hard here. My apologies. I don't know what to do. The thing just went black. I don't know. Um, anyways, though, in regards to the play calling, I was going to say this about Marcus Satterfield is that, and again, it's, you know, when you're not scoring, if you're not scoring 50 a game, the OC is going to catch heat no matter what. But for me, it's more so there's some third down calls that, that I just, 
I scratch my head a little bit, and I know there are things they're trying to do and they want to do, but like we said, like less is more. And Shane, you were mentioned in the post game that, you know, I told Sat just get the ball in our playmaker's hand. Like, keep it that simple. Um, did you see anything specifically from the play calling that you want to see more of, less of, uh, situational play calling? I think that's where I, that the most to be desired for me is the situational play calling. There's just some situations where I'm like, but, you know, it's one of those things. If it works, you're a genius. If it doesn't, you're an idiot. But it, it just – that's for me where I look at it. I'm like situationally having a feel of the game. Was there anything that just stood out to you on the play call inside of it? Not not really. Um, I think he catches a lot of uh, a lot of shit for not necessarily all of his fault. Um, at least that's my opinion. But, again, I'm not in the locker room. I'm not in the, the, the meeting room. So, I don't necessarily know what's going on behind the closed doors. And, you know, I, I don't even want to ask. You know, I, there's guys on the team that I'd prefer to ask and – it's, it's none of my damn business, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Satterfield. You know, uh, he's, he's always been a good dude to me. Um, talked to him before the game. So, you know, I like him. I like him as a person. Um, as far as a coach goes, I mean, I know that they are saying that it's a little bit more pro-style offense than, you know, than maybe we should kind of do more of the gun run type deal. But, again, who knows? I, he knows? He knows the players a hell of a lot more than I do. Yeah. And, you know, the talent that, you know, guys can do. And, and Stephen, bottom line is this, as long as you're scoring enough to win – that's all that really matters. That's, yeah, that's all <laughs> that matters. Hey, you're in the business of winning. Yep. Um, and so if you're winning, life is good. And life feels pretty good for me today. I don't know about you. Um, anyways, on the defensive side, let's, let's mention, obviously, Clayton White's defense. Because I tell you what, uh, I know the offensive side of the football, that's the flashy side. That's what's fun to talk about. Everyone's talking about. But, dude, I, I tell you, you know, there was a bit of a lull in that game, right, where South kind of gets up 17 nothing, and it sort of just kind of calmed back down and came back down to earth. And it's like, you know, you're sitting there, and it's – you know, everybody's thinking it, this game's in the bag, but you're like, there's 10 minutes left in the first quarter. First, there's a lot first. of football to go, man. There's a long way uh, before you hit victory. And, you know, like you mentioned, Texas A&M, uh, they, they fought back. They were favored in the game for a reason. They've got talent. And you're sitting there at 17 to 14 and a half. And I felt confident, but we really need to give credit to Clayton White's defense for while this offense was trying to figure things out, was sputtering a bit. This defense stood tall, held Texas A&M in check. I thought that third quarter they were dominant. Um, you hold a guy like a chain under a hundred yards and it was, he's at 99, but either way, really talented back. You hold him in check. And then you look at the secondary man, Darius rush, making the big play on the interception. I don't know why the referees were picking on cam Smith all night. I thought he played good defense and I, I don't understand what in the world was going on with that. Um, but all in all, you just look at what that defensive staff has done. You look at the defensive line, man, Zach Pickens and Jordan Birch and, and all those guys making plays and, you know, I, I know they're not at this level yet, Steven, certainly, but it, it really does. This defense is starting to kind of remind me of the defenses like when you played. Uh, you know, just flying around, aggress aggressive, yep. attacking, making plays. You know, it's not always perfect, and it wasn't, right, especially like when you first got there and before the days of Clowney and, you know, they were still building. But there's a lot of encouraging things, I think, happened on that defensive side of the ball, and you saw that definitely the way they stepped up on Saturday night. For sure, for sure. Anytime that you can you can get a, a rush with you know three or four guys um, and not have to blitz anybody, you, you're you're doing pretty well. Um, yeah, I thought the defensive line is definitely the the leader of the pack there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like I said, anytime that you can have get quarterback pressure with the three man rush or four man rush, your 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 DBs are going to appreciate you a little bit more. So, yeah, they they definitely fly around a little bit more than uh, than I've seen in the past games, if that makes sense. You know, past seasons. Um, so again, I think it all comes down to confidence. I mean, if you're confident, you're going to be able to, you know, kind of overshoot your, uh, your, you know, whatever, outpunch your coverage, so to speak. So it's all about the confidence, and it is a confident bunch of guys right now. Speaking of outpunting your coverage, dude, Beamer Ball, my goodness, That's Beamer Ball to the freaking moon. And you know, Stephen, it's funny. That was my biggest takeaway from Saturday night. I, I understand it, it's you know it's not perfect offensively, and folks want to be sexy and flashy, and they're seeing what like Tennessee's doing, which I would say everybody in the country is looking at what Tennessee's doing. Like, like we're not the only ones, but you know everybody wants to score fifty a game. And but I look at this team, and I mean this in the most complimentary way possible. This is such a Beamer team. Like, it's got Beamer's handprints all over it, where it's like, you know, and I know they want to be dynamic offensive. They want to score a ton of points, but hard nose, uh, you know, confident like you mentioned, but, uh, you know, play with ultimate tenacity, you know, aggressive, um, resilient bunch of guys, you know, and, and they went on special teams. And you saw it again with the kickoff return. And then you look at Kai Kroger, an unsung hero in the game. He's averaging 50 yards a punt. I think he had like a 70-yarder in that game. 
you know, I know it's it's the it's the facet of the game that doesn't get the glory. But man, when you're winning two out of three facets, Steven, you you got a pretty good chance to win on a weekly basis. One hundred percent. I love that. I love that he put so much emphasis on the special teams because I feel like that's a very underrated um, job as as a as a head coach. You know, that's his background though. He's a special teams guy. His dad was a special teams guy. I mean, it's it's in his DNA. So anytime you can get a a, a cheap a cheap touchdown or a cheap turnover on special teams, you, your your chances of winning are you know dramatically improved. So. Uh, yeah, that is it is Beamer ball to the freaking nth degree, man. I love it. I love to hear you say that, Steven. Now, this next question I have for you. I don't think there's anybody better that I could ask because you have literally been through this. You've been put through the ringer. So as fans, right, we can sit here. We're projecting three weeks from now, four weeks. We're gonna be eight and two, man. We're, you know, beamer ball to the moon. We're never gonna lose again, right? The highs are so high in SEC football. And when you've won four in a row, right? I mean, the fan base should feel that way. As a player, though. You got to stay level-headed because it can turn like that, right? They, they'll put you on the mountaintop when you win, and they're going to bury you when you lose. Like they, it, it goes both ways, right? And so you're the perfect person to ask, Stephen, because you've literally been through this. Bama, Kentucky. <laughs> you, yep. You've literally been through this. So this football team, you're favored, playing Mizzou, only favored by five, right? So Vegas thinks it'll be a close game. It's homecoming, 4 o'clock kick. I think Willie B will obviously be jumping again, so obviously you've got the van- the advantage that you were at home. But how does this football team stay even keel, right? And I know that for some that might seem like a simple answer. It's like, well, I mean, you haven't done anything yet. But, you know, y- you can read too much of your press clippings, especially now in the social media world where we're all on social media and everybody's patting you on the back, telling you how great you are. You're going to be 8-2 and two and you can't lose. And then, How does this football team stay even keel and not allow – you know, the outside noise to get them because outside noise can be impactful, both negative and positive. If you let it creep in, how do you stay even keel going into a game like this? That's, that's a, that's a head coach's situation. That's why, that's why Beamer's getting paid. Um, that's his job to keep these, all these guys confident, but not overconfident, if that makes sense. Um, you know, we, we did lose to, uh, to Kentucky the following week after Bama, but I mean, we were beating the hell out of them in the first half. And then, you know, Lat got hurt and we just forgot how to play football. Uh, so, I mean, there's a whole bunch of shit that happened with that whole deal. But, yeah, I mean, they, I, I was watching something. Uh, they are talking about Anthony Richardson uh, for the Gators. That he – I think he stays, like, with his mom still. He's like, you know what? These fans will – they'll I'm a Heisman hopeful. Heisman hopeful. Next thing you know, all right, man, get this damn guy out of the field. Like, get him off the field. This guy sucks. And, yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it changes it like, like, like that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just you don't want to read too much of your own stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, the social media is going to change that a little bit, but yeah, you got you got to remain confident, but you can't be overconfident. You can't take an SEC opponent like Mizzou. I mean, I know they're kind of in the tank right now a little bit, but you can't take an SEC opponent for you know for granted. So we just got to keep practicing, go to work, and uh, get ready to go. Try to make it five in a row. Yeah, dude, in f- five in a row. I'm sure we'll have the statistics sometime this week, but five in a row. I mean, what was I last? Went- time? Yeah, I mean, I, I, four in a row was the first time since 2013. I mean, it, it have to be, it have to be sometime in that run. Maybe it was 2013 we won five in a row, because I'm I'm trying to think at the end of that season. I, it, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been, it's yeah. been a while. Bottom line, and uh, again, you got a great opportunity. You can pay. You can punch your ticket to bowl eligibility. I know our goals are much bigger than that, but that's something. You know, that's, that's something. You you have your micro goals and your macro goals and all types of goals throughout the year. And one of the goals obviously is to go bowling every single year. So, right. um, but sitting here five and two now, again, Gamecocks are now ranked 25th, which Stephen, when you played, did, did you guys care what the, the ranking was? I mean, was that something that you were like, you, when you got not, ranked, you're like, yeah, well, you know, did it matter? Not, I mean, no. not really. Um, no, that, that so maybe some guys did. I, I personally didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That, that's kind of what I expected. Um, anyways, great opportunity this weekend, man. Taking on Mizzou. And Mizzou, Mizzou was a team you never got to play, right? Because that was 12 nope. was the first game. Yeah? Yep. yep. Never got a chance when, to play against Con- him. Connor went, I think, 20 of 21 or something like that for whatever yeah. reason. But, yeah, and Spurrier gave him shit in the post game for throwing an incompletion. So, that you know, that's about <laughs> – sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yep. Anyways, man, Steven, I appreciate you taking the time, dude. It, it feels good to be good. I Truly, it's uh, – again, it was a magical night in Willie B. Um I mean, what more can you say, dude? What more can you say? I, I think definitely fans should celebrate this one, enjoy this one. Obviously, it's the team's responsibility to keep that level head and build off that win. But um, for Gamecock fans, man, I, I think this is something that uh, – you know, it's funny, Stephen. I was look, actually looking today, a year ago to the date, 
was the Sunday after South Carolina lost to Texas A&M 44 to 14. So it's like, feel good about this. One. Yeah. For <laughs> I mean, sure. Feel I, good about man, this. One. I wish we had a chance to play Arkansas again. Cause I think that, uh, that we, cha- well, that's it's a different outcome if you play against them now. God, isn't it crazy when you play people? I, you know what? Actually, I'll give you an opportunity to speak on that, Stephen, because it's so funny. You know, I, I'm choosing this week to, to, to not give the negative, the negative commentary light because, again, I, while I understand, you know, we're going to be fair, we're going to be critical. If you can't be joyous and happy after a win, in my opinion, you just need to go do something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can't, if you can't be joyous after a victory, go do something else. But what do you make? Because I, 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 there, there's this, and it goes beyond South Carolina. There's this narrative in college football that I don't tip particularly like, where it's almost like because of, and I don't know if it's because of the playoff or what have you, but, and I don't know if you feel this, but it's like everybody sucks. Outside of like three or four teams, if you're not a playoff team, everybody sucks. Well, you haven't beaten anybody. Well, no, like nobody's beaten anybody. And it's like, well, you just beat a three and four Texas A&M team. I'm like, they're three and four because Carolina beat them. But like right. it's 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 so funny to me how some people operate. They will do literally anything and everything to discredit everyone's. It doesn't have to be South Carolina; just literally everybody's successes. And I'm just sitting there like, all South Carolina can do is play the teams in front of them. And I mean, you're in the SEC. I would understand if you're in the ACC or the Big Ten or the Big Twelve, and you're ma- the Pac-12. You're making that argument, but. Bro, you don't just skate through the SEC and get lucky. You know, like that that just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I, I just I think it's a silly, it's just silly commentary, man. That's that's how it feels to me. Some people just want to see the world burn, man. You know, <laughs> some people are just pissed off at the world. So uh trust me, I've had I've had several people come up to me, you know, throughout the years and just have something negative to say. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up, man. Like I I don't care about your negativity, man. I don't need it. All right. Be positive, put a smile on that face. So, I don't know, man. Just some, some people are pissed off. It's, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, well said, Stephen. Drop the mic. Feels good to be good. Um, how was the weekend, by the way, outside of the game? You obviously said you're hurting today, so I guess Cola was 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 a good time. Yeah, it was fun, man. We hit a bunch of a uh, bunch of accounts, and you know, with the yeah. Day Chaser guys, and um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was a blast. Always getting a chance to come up there and meet up with guys and old teammates, and you know, hang out a little bit. But uh, yeah, just every single time I leave an airport, I just Ugh, just feel like death. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm yeah. in a little bit of a recovery mode right now. I'm gonna go sit in the sauna for a minute. Yeah, I love it. I, yeah, I saw Nick Muse was there, and a couple, you know, I think yeah. Jones. A couple of guys. I also had Nathan Pepper hit me up on Facebook. Said he was there. He said he was actually behind me in the ticket line or or going into the game. I didn't even realize. I got to meet up with uh with old Pep next time he's in town. But uh, yep. yeah, and I, and I had people Stephen texting me like selfies. It was like I got a text at like 1 a.m. and it's you with them. I was like. That sounds about right. <laughs> Par for the yeah. course. Par for the course. Yeah. We love yeah. it. Yeah, I always, I always lose a few hours of sleep uh, yeah. going up there. How can you not, man? How can you yeah. not? Yeah. Steven, always a pleasure, man. Truly, again, I appreciate you taking the time and looking forward to many, many more of these joyous conversations in the very near future, my friend. Appreciate you. It's, yeah, man, absolutely, man. We'll see you next Monday. Yeah, man. Roach King, out. Yes, sir. Out. <laughs> see you. Thank you, dog.